classroom. Test. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله صلوات اللهم صل على محمد أحسنت أحسنت السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها أحدا فردا صمدا حيا قيوما لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وتحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ونظم أمركم وصلاح ذات البين فإنها خير من عامة الصلاة والصيام قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون Respected مؤمنين I congratulate you all on the birth of أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام who was born on the 13th of the holy month of Rajab, 30 years after the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 30 years after Am al-Fil. And the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen was a significant event in the history and the development 
of the religion of Islam because he was the number one supporter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The first believer in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And if it were not for Amir al-Mu'mineen, Rasulullah says, he himself, he says, if it were not for Amir al-Mu'mineen, then the religion of Islam would not have been built. Rasulullah, he says in a statement, لو لا سيف علي ومال خديجة لما بني الإسلام If it were not for the sword and the defense of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and the wealth of Khadija, the religion of Islam would not have been built. And Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib was special. He was unique. Unlike all of the other Muslims, unlike all of the others who joined the religion of Islam, Amir al-Mu'mineen was different. And that is that in every time the Muslims were tested in times of difficulty, Amir al-Mu'mineen was the first to volunteer himself, the first to put his life on the line for the sake of the religion of Islam. He was different because while the other Sahaba, with all respect to the companions of the Prophet, many of them were good individuals, with all respect to them, many of them, they joined the religion of Islam after decades of idol worship. After decades of polytheism, they joined the religion of Islam. And may Allah reward those who joined the religion of Islam for their good deeds. However, Amir al-Mu'mineen was different because Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Ana walidtu ala al-fitrah. He says, I was born in the religion of Islam. Although Amir al-Mu'mineen was born before the ba'tha of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, but Amir al-Mu'mineen was one who never worshipped an idol. Amir al-Mu'mineen was one who was raised by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. When he was born, his mother handed him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Amir al-Mu'mineen was one who was born in the holy Kaaba. Which one of the Sahaba, which one of the Muslims, they were born in the holy Kaaba? And this is why the Qur'an considers Amir al-Mu'mineen to be so close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where the Qur'an refers to him as the nafs of Rasulullah, the nafs, the soul of the Prophet. In the verse of Mubahala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ This was when the Christians of Najran, they came to debate with the Prophet. They kept debating and debating until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, tell them, you want to continue debating? Let's go and do mubahala. Mubahala means we go out and we ask Allah to send the wrath upon the liars, upon the group that's a liar. So, this is the order of Allah. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ We will call our children and you call your children. We will call our women and you call your women. And we will bring our nafs, our souls, ourselves and you bring yourselves. Who did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa bring? That day, the day of the Mubahala which was on the 24th of the Hijjah. Rasulullah brought Fatima to Zahra from amongst the women. He could have brought many women, but he only brought Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. And he brought Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein as the children. And in the category of the nafs, he brought Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Today, some people they say, no, Ali ibn Abi Talib is not the nafs. Of okay, which category would he fall in? Would he fall in the category of the children of the Prophet? No. He's not from the children of the Prophet. Would he fall in the category of the women? Obviously not. So there's only one category that Amir al-Mu'mineen could be placed in and that is the nafs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And indeed, he was so close to Rasulullah that Muslims and Rasulullah considered him like the nafs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They asked Ahmad ibn Hanbal, 
the leader of the Hanbali school of thought. They asked him, who are the greatest of the Sahaba? He said, Abu Bakr. And then they tell him, and then who? He says, Umar. They tell him, and then who? He says, Uthman. They tell him, what about Ali ibn Abi Talib? You've left Amir al-Mu'mineen. He tells them, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the nafs of the Prophet. You asked me about the Sahaba. You asked me about the companions. The Quran refers to Ali ibn Abi Talib as the nafs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, meaning he was closer than any of the other companions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And this is the reality, my dear brothers and sisters. And it is no surprise for us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi chose him, Amir al Mu'mineen, to be the leader after him. That God chose Amir al Mu'mineen to be the leader after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi because he was so close to the Prophet. In fact, he was the, the position of leadership and Khilafah is a position of purity. And Amir al Mu'mineen was the pure one that was raised by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. From the beginning of his life, it was all purity. A man who was born in a place of worship and his life came to an end after 63 years also in the state of sujood while he was performing sujood and in between he lived a life of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defending Rasulullah, defending the Quran and defending the religion of Islam yes that is Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam his mother Fatima bintu Asad on the 13th of Rajab. Now the month of Rajab is the season of Umrah. It's the season of performing Umrah. Even in pre-Islamic times, people used to perform Umrah in Rajab. This is why Rajab is one of the Ashhur al-Huram, one of the sacred months. Fatima bintu Asad, she's pregnant and she goes, she, began, she begins to circumambulate around the Kaaba to do tawaf around the Kaaba and she says, Rabbi inni mu'minatun bik, O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, I am a faithful believer in you. وَبِمَا جَاءَ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ مِنْ رُسُلْ وَكُتُبٍ And in the messengers and the books that you have sent. وَإِنِّي مُصَدِّقَةٌ بِكَلَامْ جَدِّي إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْخَلِيلِ وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ بَنَى الْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ And I believe in my grandfather, the words of monotheism, of my grandfather Ibrahim al-Khalil, and he is the one who built the Kaaba. فَبِحَقِّ الَّذِي بَنَى هَذَا الْبَيْتِ وَبِحَقِّ الْمَوْلُودِ الَّذِي فِي بَطْنِي لَمَا يَسَّرْتَ عَلَيَّ وَلَادَتِي So I ask you, by the honor of the one who built the sacred home, the sacred Kaaba, and by the honor and the haqq of the one who is in my belly, in my womb, make my pregnancy easy. Every pregnant lady, before giving birth, she gets nervous. She goes through anxiety. So Fatima bint Asad is doing a dua. She's asking Allah to give her ease. And when she finished that dua, the Kaaba. The Kaaba has a door, but the Kaaba has corners, four corners. The corner, Ar-Rukn al-Yamani, or the corner of Al-Mustajar, cracked open. And until today, if any of you have gone to Mecca, you go and you see that corner of the Kaaba, you see there's a crack still there on the Kaaba. Until today you could see it. You go and you see that the Kaaba opened from its corners and Fatima bint Asad went inside. She went inside and she delivered that baby, that child who came to be the greatest supporter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And the first believer in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. She stayed in the Kaaba for three days and it was a very crowded event. There were many people watching because there's a lot of people in Masjid al-Haram. They were all waiting outside, not knowing what's happening. And from those who were waiting was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi waiting for his supporter. Waiting for Ali ibn Abi Talib. She comes out and she's carrying a baby with her. And soon after, this baby was handed over to the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Because Abu Talib, there was a time where Abu Talib went through some difficulties. So Rasulullah, he tells his uncle, he tells his uncle Abu Talib, 
we will help you in raising your sons and raising your children. So Hamza took one of the sons and, and, Amir al and Rasulullah took Ali ibn Abi Talib and he says, man alaykum. I chose to raise the one who God chose above you all. And he raised Amir al muminin The same way Fatima bint Asad and Abu Talib raised Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and showed him love. Rasulullah showed love to Amir al muminin He says in Nahj al balagha he says, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَوْضِعِي مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ You Muslims, you all know my position from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله بالقرابة القريبة والمنزلة الخصيصة You all know that I was the closest to the Prophet. He's telling the Muslims many years later وَضَعَنِي فِي حِجْرِهِ وَأَنَا وَلِيدِ يَضُمُّنِي إِلَى صَدْرِهِ he carried me in his lap. وَأَنَا Walid Walid means I'm a newborn. Meaning a newborn, he carried me and he brings me closer to his chest. وَيُكَنِّفُنِي فِي فِرَاشِهِ Just like the parents, they put the newborn in their own bed next to them. He says he put me next to him. وَيَمُسُّنِي جَسَدَهِ Our bodies would touch. وَيَشُمُّنِي عَرْفَهِ and I, I grew up smelling the scent of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, a baby knows the scent of their parents, especially the mother. They know the scent of their mother. He says, I, sm I, I grew up with the scent of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa kana yamdhugh shay thumma yulqimni. He used to chew the food and then he used to put it in my mouth. At that time, there was no baby food. So a mother... To get the child to eat, she used to chew the food and then put it in the, in the mouth of the child. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used to do to Amir al muminin And then he says, وَمَا وَجَدَ لِي كَذْبَةٌ فِي قَوْلٍ وَلَا خَطْلَةٌ فِي فِعْلٍ And he never saw me lying. He never saw me slipping and doing things that were wrong. And then he describes Rasulullah, وَلَقَدْ قَرَنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ مِنْ لَدٌ إِنْ كَانَ فَطِيمًا أَعْظَمْ مَلَكْ مِنْ مَلَائِكَتِهِ He says, the greatest of God's angels was always with the Prophet. He was always protecting Rasulullah and always with the Prophet. يَسْلُكُ بِهِ طَرِيقَ الْمَكَارِمْ وَمَحَاسِنَ أَخْلَاقِ الْعَالِمْ لَيْلَهُ وَنَهَارَهُ وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَتَّبِعَهُ إِتِّبَاعَ الْفَصِيلِ أَثَرَ أُمِّهِ He says, and I used to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi just like the baby camel follows its mother. It places its foot in the same place. يَرْفَعُ لِي فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِهِ عَلَمَا وَيَأْمُرُنِي بِالْإِقْتِدَاءِ بِهِ He says, every day he would discipline me. He would raise me and then he says, until I heard the ranna of the shaitan, the scream of the shaitan. I asked Rasulullah, what is this? He tells me, this is Iblis, he's given up hope that he will be worshipped. You see what I see and you hear what I hear, except you are not a prophet. So my dear brothers and sisters, Amir al muminin was the first to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And some people, they come and they try to take away this virtue from Ali ibn Abi Talib. They come and they say he was the first child to believe. And from the adults, there were others who believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Believing in, is believing, my dear brothers and sisters. Supporting is supporting. Taking a position and defending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, that is a position. And Amir al muminin he was the first to take a stance in defense of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In fact, in the first occasion where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi publicly came out to tell people about his prophethood, who was he supposed to tell? He told his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And tell your family first. Tell your ashira. Tell your tribe. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he gathered his family. And Amir al muminin he says, I cooked. Amir al muminin he slaughtered the sheep and he cooked. For three days, Rasulullah, the first day he tries to tell them, Abu Talib, he says something. And then he's, it was a failed attempt. The second day, the third day, Rasulullah, after he feeds them, 
He tells his family, Oh my dear family, I don't know anyone who has brought his family a gift and a message and a blessing like that which I have brought you. I have brought you khayr dunya wal akhirah, the blessings of dunya and akhirah. And that is for you to join Islam, accept me as a prophet, and who out of you will support me? Who out of you will be with me? Whoever supports me, whoever believes in me, this person will be my khalifa, my wasi, and my wazir after me. They all stay quiet. At that time, it's not easy to be the first to, to, to join a group. Joining the bandwagon once hundreds and thousands of people are riding it, it's easy. But when you're the first, it's really hard because you have to be daring. You have to have the faith. You have to have the strong iman. None of the family, even the family of Rasulullah, they stayed quiet. Amir al-Mu'mineen, who was around 13 years old at that day, he had already believed. He had already believed in the Prophet. He says, Ana ya Rasulullah, I will support you. Rasulullah tells him, wait, O oh Ali. Who out of you will support me? He says, Ana ya Rasulullah, I will support you. I will be there for you. Who out of you will support me? Until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, he tells, he tells them, he tells them, إِذَنْ أَنْتَ خَلِيفِي إِذَنْ أَنْتَ خَلِيفَتِي وَوَصِيِّي وَوَزِيرِي مِنْ بَعْدِي Therefore, you are my khalifa, and you are my wasi, and you are my wazir after me. Now, the great scholar, there's a scholar by the name of At-Tabari, Ibn Jarir At-Tabari. He has a book, Tariq At-Tabari, and he has a book, Tafsir At-Tabari. In his book of history, in his tarikh, he points out the hadith exactly the way it was mentioned right now. وَأَنذَرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And then he says, therefore you are my khalifa, my wasi, and my wazir after me. In his tafsir, in his tafsir, in the tafsir of this verse, وَأَنذَرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ He says the whole story, but then he says, and then Rasulullah told Ali ibn Abi Talib, إِذَنْ أَنْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَكَذَا مِنْ بَعْدِي Therefore, you are blank, blank, blank after me. Imagine leaving out the, more, the most sensitive word. إِذَنْ أَنْتَ خَلِيفَتِي وَوَصِيِّي وَوَزِيرِي مِنْ بَعْدِي Leaving it out in the tafsir. Is this being truthful? Is this honesty? No. And this is the oppression that Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib had to deal with. Amir al-Mu'mineen, as we mentioned, he was raised by the Prophet born in the Kaaba, pure birth, the first to believe. Rasulullah announced him to his family and he was always the one who would put his life on the line in the defense of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the defense of the religion of Islam. The Prophet was preaching the religion of Islam for 13 years in Mecca. A handful of people believed in him. Not that many people believed in him. And until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayh, there was an assassination attempt on the life of the Prophet. Assassination attempt. They, they said for once and for all, let's kill the Prophet. They gathered 40 tribes uh, and 40 men. They came and they said, let's all attack at the same time. Who's going to take responsibility for this? They don't know that while they're plotting, yamkuruna wa yamkur Allah, Wallahu khayrul makirin. They plot, they make plans, but Allah also makes plans. This is the thing that people fail to un understand. Where Jibra'il comes and tells Rasulullah, Jibra'il was an informant for Rasulullah, a good informant though. He comes and he tells Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, this is the plan. Tonight you leave. Tonight is the, your night of hijrah. Tonight you have to leave Mecca. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is ready to leave. But someone has to stay in the house. Someone has to put his life on the line so that they don't realize that the Prophet has left. So he comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and he tells him, he tells him, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, tonight my house is going to be attacked. Tonight 40 men from Quraysh with their swords wielded, they're ready to attack the house. Are you willing to stay in the house? Are you willing to sleep in my bed? 
أمير المؤمنين يا رسول الله يا رسول الله أو في سلامة من ديني He doesn't say will I live, will I survive this He says will my faith be sound if I do this and will you be safe Rasulullah tells him I will be safe and you will be safe and your faith will be safe He says yes ya Rasulullah Yes I'm willing to do it And that night Amir al-Mu'mineen slept in the bed of the Prophet The night of the Hijrah The Prophet goes to the cave Amir al-Mu'mineen he sleeps in the bed of the Prophet Many years later they asked him He says that night was the most comfortable sleep I slept Imagine How many of us would be able to sleep Knowing it's going to be attacked He slept That night And the hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Jibra'il and Mikail, the two angels. Allah tells them, O oh, oh, angels, I made you two brothers and I made Muhammad and Ali brothers. Which one out of you is willing to sacrifice his life for the other? Go and look at Ali. He's sacrificing his life for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Go down to earth and protect him. So Jibra'il and Mikail, one on his side and one on the other, they say, مَنْ مِثْلُكَ يَا عَلِي وَقَدْ بَاهَ اللَّهِ بِهِ مَلَائِكَةُ السَّمَا Who is like you, O Ali, where the angels, Allah tells the angels learn from Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen and the verse was revealed, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ ابْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Wallahu ra'ufun bil ibad. And there are from those who are willing to sacrifice themselves for the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Of course, their, flaw, their plot was foiled and they attacked, but they saw that it was not Rasulullah and Rasulullah had escaped. And later on, Amir al Mu'mineen, he also was able to join Rasulullah in Medina after the migration. But it was not an easy time. Today when we sit and we read about the difficulties that Rasulullah and the Muslims went through, we, my dear brothers and sisters, our Islam, this religion, it came to us on a silver plate. It came to us very easy. And we take it for granted. We don't appreciate the salah. We don't appreciate the places of worship. We don't appreciate the things that we have. My dear brothers and sisters, the early believers, this Islam did not come to them easy. This is why we have to appreciate it. The Muslims, they migrated to Medina and the battles began one after the other. The battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, the battle of Ahzab, the battle of Khan. All of these battles, one after the other. And you see who was the closest to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. You want to see who had the greatest Iman? Your actions are a reflection of your Iman. And go and look at the actions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. In the battle of Badr, he was the first. In the battle of Badr, 70 of the mushrikeen were killed. Half of them were killed in the hands and the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib. 35. It was the role of Ali. In the battle of, in the battle of Uhud, which was the most difficult and challenging moment for the Muslims. A very challenging moment. The Muslims... They saw that that's it, they're going to get wiped out. And they started, they turned around and they started running up the hill. They started running up the mountain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, The Prophet is calling you from behind you. Ashabi, my companions, where are you? They ran away. One of them, he ran away, he showed up three days later. Three days later he showed up. And then he comes and he wants to claim to be a leader of the Muslims. Amir al muminin and four others, and one of them was a lady, stood around the Prophet defending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He kept fighting and fighting and defending the Prophet until his sword broke. His sword broke in the battle. He tells Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, man is supposed to fight with his sword. My sword is broken. Jibra'il comes down and gives Rasulullah a sword and Jibra'il calls out between the heavens La fata illa Ali, la sayfa illa dhul fiqar There is no valiant soldier and man like Ali ibn Abi Talib and there is no sword like dhul fiqar My dear brothers and sisters, Amir al-Mu'mineen 
what makes him unique, Imam Ali, what is, makes him unique is that in the turbulent times when people were tested, when people went through difficulties, when the Iman and the faith of people, of the Muslims was tested, Ali ibn Abi Talib remained constant. And this is how you should be, my dear brothers and sisters. This is how we should be. Be the constant. Let your Iman be what gives you stability and constancy and consistence, consistency in times of difficulties. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ If you have the love of God in your heart, then you should not have fear. Then you should not compromise your iman and your faith. You see that during the life of the Prophet, there were those who came late to join the religion of Islam. And after the death of the Prophet, many of the Sahaba were tested. There were wars, there were battles amongst the Sahaba. Amir al-Mu'mineen remained with the truth. He remained constant. And this is Ali ibn Abi Talib, my dear brothers and sisters. This is why we follow Amir al-Mu'mineen. Because he was the one who was always with the Prophet from day one all the way until the end of his life. We congratulate you all once again on this auspicious occasion. And the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Dhikru Aliyin ibada." The remembrance and the mentioning of the merits of Amir al-Mu'mineen, it's a form of ibadah. When you're loving Imam Ali, some people they come and they say, why don't you talk about Rasulullah? Well, if we want to love Rasulullah and truly understand who Rasulullah was, who do we have to go through? The door to the city of knowledge. Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha. And Amir al-Mu'mineen is the one who will introduce us to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So my dear brothers and sisters, I congratulate you all on the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Inshallah, tomorrow night, Saturday night, we're having a celebration here. The celebration will be somewhat unique. It's going to be a trivia form of uh, question, a game show style. There's going to be Nasheed and Mawlid as well. And come here and celebrate the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen as we learn about the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له من بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد وترحم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وتحنن على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ونظم أمركم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وصل اللهم على جميع الأنبياء والشهداء والصديقين والصالحين وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن أبي طالب والصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء وصل اللهم على صبطي الرحمة وأئمة الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل اللهم على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه My dear brothers and sisters the Friday prayer if sometimes if the circumstances are there it is supposed to address some of the current affairs and some of the current issues that are going on. And while we are talking about Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen reminds us of a leader 
and a government that stood upon justice. Amir al-Mu'mineen, one thing that makes his government, he only ruled for about five years. But the time that he ruled, despite the turbulence, despite the three wars that were waged against him, Jamal and Safin and Nahrawan, despite all of that, Amir al-Mu'mineen was able to establish justice. Amir al-Mu'mineen did not discriminate in his rule. Amir al-Mu'mineen did not divide people based on ethnicities, Arab and non-Arab. He gave everyone equally. Everyone was treated equally. And this is one of the reasons why some people did not like him. Because as soon as the official Khilafah came to him, he started treating people equally from Bayt al-Mal, from the Muslim treasury. A lady comes to him, she tells him, I think there was a mistake. She received her income, her weekly or monthly income. She says, I think there was a mistake. He tells her, what was the mistake? She says, you gave me the same amount that you gave this non-Arab lady. He tells her, I read the Qur'an. I didn't see anywhere in the Qur'an where it says an Arab is better than a non-Arab. I read in the Qur'an, it says, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Verily, the one who is the closest in the eyes of God is the one who has the most taqwa. And this is the equality that we have been missing until today. Since the day Amir al-Mu'mineen was killed, there has not been a just government. And we are, we are witnessing the injustice. And yesterday, here in the United States, Although there's a lot of injustice going on, but this was all over the news. And that was when the United States Congress, the Republican Party, they voted to remove the only Muslim hijabi from Africa, black congresswoman. They, they decided to remove her from the Foreign Relations Committee. You see, as soon as they came, as soon as they got hold of the Congress, this was one of the first acts that they did. They've been threatening to remove her this whole time, and now they did, yesterday. And if this shows us anything, it shows us the Islamophobia, it shows us the racism, it shows us the bigotry, and it shows us the... Loyalty not to the United States and not to the Constitution of the United States, which, tells, which says that everyone should be treated equally, but it shows us that the majority or a group of people in Congress, they're more loyal to Israel than they are to the United States of America. Why? What was their justification? Why did they remove her? They said we're removing her because she said a few anti-Semitic things. Well, here... There's a big difference when you're criticizing Israel, a country that is based upon apartheid, a country that is oppressing and carrying out acts of aggression against its neighbors, and the citizens and people there and the Palestinians, Muslim or Christian, if you're criticizing Israel, here, here they will equate it to anti-Semitism. And that is not anti-Semitic. It's not anti-Semitic to criticize Israel. Right now we criticize some Muslim countries. Countries that are ruled by Muslims. They're led by Muslims. We criticize them. Does this make you anti-Islam if you're criticizing the policies? The politics of a predominantly Muslim country? So here we see the double standards that are carrying out. In the name of the U.S. government. Using the Constitution. And what's funny is that these are the same people that come and preach democracy and human rights and let's talk about the oppression that other people are seeing all over the world. But now when it comes to Israel, they go back to their roots of bigotry and prejudice and Islamophobia. And this is a reality, my dear brothers and sisters. Why is it that this lady was removed from the Foreign Relations Committee? Do you have to be white? Do you have to be a man to talk about U.S. foreign policy? Why can't someone who's a refugee, why can't someone who's an American, just like everyone else, talk about and has been voted to Congress, why can't someone who's a Muslim talk about foreign policy? Is this only to the white-skinned people? Is this only to someone who is not a Muslim? They have the right to talk about foreign policy? Well, guess what? Maybe they need a Muslim to give them some points about foreign policy because it is the Muslims who are on the opposite end of American foreign policy, usually. The Muslims are the ones who are being oppressed 
as a result of American foreign policy and American loyalty to Israel. So this is a point that I felt that needed to be addressed. And another point I wanted to, I wanted to address is the last week or a few days ago, the Peshawar uh, bombing in a masjid. And this is also something very sad where a group of people with a twisted mentality, they come in the name of Islam, in the name of the Quran, in the name of this beautiful religion, a religion of peace, a religion of tolerance, a religion of acceptance to other people, they come and they blow up a mosque, blow up people praying in a mosque. Is this Islam? Is this the Quran? Is this something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would be happy with? Of course not. Of course not. But these problems that exist and the weakness of the Muslims, Yes, there are foreign enemies that are trying to destroy Islam, but at the end of the day, we Muslims, we need to stand strong and we need to speak out against the injustice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and justice to the oppressed wherever they may be. My dear brothers and sisters, before I finish, we have this form here and Brother Hassan um, can give you more, they're outside. This is to sign up for, to be a recurrent donor, to, to every month give a donation to this organization. As you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the birth of Amir al-Mu'mineen last year was our first function, was our first event. So it's been one year where we started this organization. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us and we've been able to achieve so much. And... From what, we have seen, from what we have been seeing from our programs, the Sunday school, the Friday prayer, Thursday night, and our main functions, this facility, unfortunately, it's become too small for us. And we are quickly outgrowing it because there's a large community here that is in need. So we have been, inshallah, and we're thinking of finding a bigger place, either a building or a piece of land, and that will require support from the community. Of course, support comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you do something and I will put the barakah and I will help you and I will support you. And one other thing that we need, even if we were to get a bigger place, even if we were to get uh, uh, something larger, we would need to show the bank and in order to sustain the costs of a larger place, a larger facility, we would need to show that we have constant recurring um, donations coming in, even if it's at $50, even if it's at $100, even if it's at $150, $200, whatever you can give. My dear brothers and sisters, on your Netflix account, on your Hulu, on your um, streaming, we probably spend more than $100 easily a year. Just to go out and have dinner or have lunch with the family, you're spending more than $100. So it's not going to be much to allocate a small amount, something, depending on how much you can give towards this organization. May Allah bless you all. You could get these um, from Brother Hassan or they're outside, inshallah. You could get these and fill them out and please give them to Brother Hassan. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحة